God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? Apostle Robert Jenkins, it is a Wednesday morning. I tell you, I'm getting my days all mixed up. But it's a Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we are out of New Orleans. And as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you. Good to see you, Sister Jeremy. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Rita, God bless everybody. Brother Brian. God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button, share this on your page, invite as many people out, let them know that there's a word from the Lord. God bless you this morning, son. God bless everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Odessa, God bless you. Sister Journey, God bless you. Uh, tremendous, tremendous teaching yesterday. I tell you, God is really, the favor of God is really on your life. You are impacting the nation. Good to see you, Brother Reno. Love you, man. Cousin Mark Heron, God bless you. God bless everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sister Christina, we're going to get that out to you today. Uh, we'll be mailing out. We are mailing out the CDs, the tapes, uh, well, the T-shirts, the, the books. So if you have not received your T-shirt, if you have not received your books or anything like that, you have not received, notify us and let us know, okay? Uh, the T-shirts are $19.99, and the black T-shirts are coming in this week. So we'll have black T-shirts those are the white t-shirts. We have black t-shirts and we have hats as well. So I'll be advertising that. We're going to constantly, we're building an online store. So we started out with t-shirts, hats. We're going to move into dresses. We're going to move into earrings. We go, Nick, Nick, Sister Nick Journey, she's already selling earrings. We're just going to tie into all the business aspect of Divine Insight Ministries, okay? But if you have not received your books, if you have not received anything that you would like to receive from Divine Insight Ministries, please notify us, let us know. Uh, we'll let you know the, the cost of each thing and uh, we'll mail it out to you, okay? If you already paid for some things and you have not received that, please give us the information, let us know your address, your shirt size, things like that. And if you'd like to have a book or a CD, uh, let us know and we'll take care of that right away, okay? God bless you. Good to see everybody. Sister Jamie, Sister Cindy Mo. God bless everybody. And uh, let's get ready to move into part nine. It's time to continue. It's time to continue. I tell you, God is just so good. I am so excited about what he's doing. And I'm just, I'm just over, uh, it's just, I'm overwhelmed with the love that God is doing. He's building us as a family. Good to see you, Sister Jan. God bless everybody. So let's get ready. Father, thank you. For another day to please you, another day to walk in your purpose, another day to declare your power, another day to reveal your glory, another day to walk around the world with your fingerprints on our lives, and we bless you for it. We understand the responsibility to carry the glory, and we thank you, Lord, you have given us the strength to do it, not out of our strength, but out of your strength. Thank you, Lord, that the word is a lamp unto our feet, a light into our pathway. We bless you for that revelation. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Bless us this morning. Wisdom, we're listening. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. We are prepared and ready to follow. God, we come to you ready, open, and empty. Pour into us. Oh, God, teach us, God, your ways. Give us your mind, your heart. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this union. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this season, this lifestyle. And we bless you. Bless your people everywhere. Give them a word they never heard before. Fresh anointing. Oh, God, we thank you that every shackle on our mind cannot hold us down. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we thank you, Lord, that we are free. We are free to serve you. For when the truth has set free, we are free indeed. And we thank you, Lord, for this mind, the mind of Christ, that allows us to to move in your will, to know what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of the Father. So we bless you. Bless your people right now in the name of Jesus. We are endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. And God, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, all things are done. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, everybody. I tell you, I'm excited about what God is doing. Uh, do not fear any type of loss, okay? Because in God, there is... It, there is a lose to gain, and sometimes in God, you have a temporary loss in order to have a permanent gain. You have to have a temporary loss in order to have a permanent gain. God is teaching us, good to see you, Pastor Clark. God is teaching us how to walk in the spirit, how to stay in that heavenly mind, how to stay in that heavenly place. Yesterday, I talked about how to stay on fire. Good to see you, Brother Robert Bailey. Love you, man. Stay encouraged. Keep going. Keep walking. Nothing has changed. God's plan is always in charge. 
Okay? But we learn how to walk in that spirit. How to not fear because uh, a flood may come. Uh, trouble may come. So what? Who cares? You know, if God be for me, he's more than a whole wall against me. So you walk in that. You learn how to live in that place. You learn how to breathe. There is a new oxygen that comes from the spirit that we breathe that oxygen. And so God keeps us. He keeps us in the midnight hour. He holds us. I'm literally in the arms of the master. And, see, and so I know that. I, I, I know where I stand. I know my position in God, okay? And so my condition is irrelevant because my position in God is so powerful. Nothing can stop me, okay? And so I want to encourage you this morning on some things as we go into, uh, it's time to continue, okay? It's time to continue. Part nine. Part, point number one today. And the kind of stuff that, that happens when I first get up in the morning. Uh, point number one. Good to see you, Sister Logan. God bless you. Uh, there is a transition coming your way. Get ready for that transition. God is going to shift it. He's going to break some things. He's going to show you. Uh, this is what he revealed to me, Sister Logan. He's going to show you the uh, the madness to the method of the enemy. And you want to be able to figure out that strategy, break it. And there's some things in your life that you've been trying to break uh, for years. It's going to break. And that that's not only for Sister Logan, but that's for many of us. The devil, uh, God is revealing where the devil planted the trap. Okay, God is revealing where the devil has planted the trap. There are certain things in our life. It's like somebody leaving a a a a a, a camera in your house, and you trying to figure out how they know your every move. But because there were cameras hidden in your house, but God is exposing the hidden cameras. Okay. All right. God is exposing the hidden cameras of our life, of why we could not continue, why we could not move, why we could not advance, because the hidden camera was allowing the devil to know our, our movements. OK, but God has exposed those things that were holding us down from advancement. OK, oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God, okay? And now that you know them, not only do you know them, if you are at a point now that problems don't decrease your joy, they increase your joy. When things happen to you, there's an increase in your joy. That's how you know you're in the spirit. When you begin to rejoice, you count it all joy when you fall into downward temptations. Knowing this, you know that every temptation brings you to a place. Temptation brings experience. It brings a big hope. Hope make them not ashamed. And so because of that, you count it all joy. We are in a place now that problems and situations do not depress us. Watch this. They cause us to rejoice. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Good to see you, prophet. It's Michelle Summers, God bless you. And so you learn to count it all joy. This is a joyous occasion that God allowed me to be tested at this level. That must mean that I qualify for the next level of advancement. Woo! And get excited about it. Rejoice in the Lord, okay? Because he is on your side, okay? All right. Point number one. Stop believing you can be stopped. Write that down. Write that down, okay? Write that down. Yeah, write that down. Stop believing you can be stopped. They can't stop you. You can't. They can't stop you. Or old said, uh, I can't lose with the stuff I use. They can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that. I, I, I don't believe anybody can stop me. You can't stop what God started. You can't curse what God has already blessed. You can't, you can't pull me down when God is behind. And God is for me. He's more than the whole world against me. And you got to know that. You can't stop what God has started. All right? And you got to stop believing you can be stopped. Stop believing you can be stopped. Stop believing you can be stopped. Stop believing that this can fail. Stop believing you can lose. No, no, every loss is a gain because I'm walking with God. And so you got to stop believing you can be stopped. Most of the times, the reason why you it looked like you were being stopped is because you believe you can be stopped. You can't stop me. Then, listen, and I'm going to say something to you that's powerful, but you got to hear this with the right ears. There is a There is a confidence in God that looks like arrogance. There is a confidence in God that looks like arrogance. And many times you were not able to advance because you didn't have enough confidence in what God has declared over your life. Oh God. But there's a confidence in God. There's a confidence in God that make you walk in a room and say, I don't have to worry when I walk out, it's mine. There's a confidence in God that when you open up your mouth, you, you speak as if it already has happened. Because I 
am convinced of what God is saying. And so many times you can't advance because you don't believe. Oh, or you do believe, but you got to say, I stop believing. I can be stopped. You can't stop me. You can't stop nothing God has said on my life. You can't stop anything. And that goes for anybody who tries to get in the way. This is too powerful. It's too strong. Come on, somebody. I got a level of confidence. You, I know you. Listen, this is how you know you're moving in God. When they start thinking you're arrogant, when they start thinking, you know what? You know what? He thinks too highly of himself that he ought to think. No, you're not used to thinking like a king. Oh, no, no. I think like a king. I think like a king. I have a heart of a servant, but I think think like a key. And I no longer believe I can be stopped. I no longer can believe the devil can hold me back. He can't hold me back because what God has declared, he declared it from the end. It's already over. It's already done. And so I now walk in full confidence without a blink, without a shake, without a shiver. I know that God is for me. Woo! Oh God, good to see you, Dad. Good to see you. Always, we thank God for my father, Pastor Michael Scott. Okay? The confidence in what God has declared over our lives, okay? So stop believing it. In the book of Acts, the, the apostles had did some things, and they got mad at the apostles, and they put the apostles uh, in prison, and they was going to try to kill the apostles. And there's one man stood up and said, look, if they be of God, you can't stop it anyway. You got to know that. 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 That's point number one. Point number two, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Romans chapter eight, you got to know. And watch this. I'm going to read it because I want you to get excited. Okay. I want you to get excited. I want you to understand the safest place you ever can be is in God's word. The safest place you ever can be is in God's word. It's safer to be in God's word than it is to be in heaven. Uh oh, uh oh. Do you know God's word is a safer place even in heaven? Because heaven and earth may pass away, but not one jot nor one tittle of my word shall pass away. The safest place you ever can be is in God's word. And I want to tell you what God's word says about your destiny. Okay? Know that. That's why I'm going to continue. You can't stop me. I know you can't stop me. I'm going to tell you you can't stop me. I'm going to get in your face and say you can't stop this. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to get in your face. Well, I'm bold enough to get in the devil's face. I get in the face of fear, in the face of doubt, anybody who want to face me, I got a word for you, you can't stop me, listen, listen, and everything in my body says that's right, everything in the universe says that's right, I got backup, come on somebody, oh, you're not afraid, I got backup, everything that's tied to the universe has to back up what God says, all I needed to do was believe it, put it on my mind, and the universe will bring it to me, it works for God, everything works for God, come on somebody, and you got to know it, okay? Point number one. Watch this. Point number two. If God be for you, here he is. Romans chapter eight. Get ex get excited about what God is saying. Get excited about it. Okay. Woo! Watch this. Here we go. And we know, we know, and we know. What do we know? That all things, all things, all things, every part of everything works together for good for God. Only person good is God. There's nothing good but the Father. So all things work for the Father. <laughs> oh my God. You know what? Sometimes you got to tell the devil, I got too much revelation to go for that trick. I, God has given me too much revelation to be deceived in that area. I have too much revelation to be frustrated there. I have too much revelation to get off track. I have too much revelation to be disturbed. See, when you receive the revelation of who Jesus is and you receive the revelation of who he is in your life and you receive the revelation of what God has told you, you see the revelation of your troubles, you see the revelation of your suffering, you see the revelation, you have to tell the devil, I have too much revelation to fall for that one. I have too much revelation to be emotional about that situation. I got too much revelation. Woo! God. Oh, that's it. Too blessed to be stressed. Watch this. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. I love God. Do you love God? Yes, we do. Watch this. To them who are the call, I am, I am the elect of God. The call according to his purpose, not my purpose. 
The reason why you can't stop me because the purpose that I'm hired by God. I am a son of God. I am a servant of God. Come on, somebody. I am in relationship with God. And according to his purpose, my life is included in his purpose. This has to work because his purpose will always work. And my life is a part of his purpose. Woo! God, that's, you got to feel that right there. Watch this. For whom he foreknew. For whom he foreknow, in whom he foreknow, what's this? He also predestinated. God made a determination about my destiny before, pre, before, destiny in, before, based upon his foreknowledge. He knew everything that was going to happen. He knew everything that was going to come. He knew every situation that was going to fall. He knew every disobedience. He knew it. And he already predestined it based upon his foreknowledge. And so he's not hoping that it worked out. He already knew what was going to work out and made a predestination based upon his foreknowledge. And who he foreknow. Watch this. Watch this. And who he foreknow. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed to the image of his son. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. To be conformed to the image of his son. Watch this. Are you getting that? That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Here we go. Moreover, who he did predestine. Who did he predestine? Us. Them he also called. So because I have been predestined, which means my destiny has been set. The reason why you can't stop me on my journey, because my destiny has already been fulfilled. You can't stop me in this journey. Because even though it looked like you can stop me on the journey, I know I'm going to get there because it's already been predestined for me to get there. It's already been pre predestined for me to finish. It's already been predestined for me to accomplish. It's already been predestined for me to establish. And so I don't care what it looked like in the journey. I'm telling you if, you, if, if you stay with me long enough, watch this, you will see I have to get there because I already got there because it's already been predestined. And because it's been predestined, now everything else can be activated. Ooh, Jesus. Watch this. So for whom he predestined, he also called. In whom he called, he also justified. I don't care what you think you know about me or anybody else. I've been made justified by him. I've been made just right by him. I'm justified. Why? See, he starts from the end. He said, okay, it's predestined, so let me call it. Okay, let me call it, so let me justify it. Woo, God, you better watch this. It will be justified. He also glorified. So I glorify it so I can justify it. I justify it so I can call it. I call it so I can predestine it. Watch this. What shall we say to these things? What shall we say to these things? What shall we say? This is what should be coming out your mouth. What should we say to the predestination of my life? What shall we say to the call of my life? What shall we say, watch this, to the justification? What shall we say to the glorification? Let me tell you what you should be talking about. Here it is. If God be for us, woo, if God be for us, who can be against us? Well, let, let me take it to another level. Paul said, if God be for us. Well, let me answer that. Since God is for us, then nobody can be against us. Paul put it at a question. I'm going to make a statement. I'm not putting it as a question. Watch this. At the end of this verse, there's a question mark. He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? I want Apostle Paul to know, watch this. Here come the confidence. I already got the answer. No, it's not if God be for us. Since God is for us, since I come to the revelation, I am totally convinced. I'm fully persuaded that he is for us. For us, since I have the revelation, then there is no one that can be against us. Woo! You got to you got to talk to the devil like back up. See, you got to know who you are in God. Watch this. If God be for us, then no one can be against us. He that spared not his own son, 
but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Christ, when he died on the cross, he didn't die so that we can be saved. He died so we can freely get everything. Freely give us all things. It all belongs to me. It all belongs to me. It all belongs to me. Everything that's tied to God's purpose belongs to me. Freely give me all things. Watch this. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Come on, talk to me, somebody. It is God that justifies. Woo! Uh-oh. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Stop trying to condemn people when you don't have the blood to cover them. Jesus has the blood to cover every murder and sin, adulterous, fornication. So how can you condemn when you don't have the covering for the condemnation? He said it's him that died. It's him that sacrificed. It's him that lived the life. Woo! <laughs> Oh, yea, rather that is risen again, who eat, even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. This is what you got to know. I got to know. I don't care what the devil tries to accuse me of. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father, still making intercession. Still making intercession. Nope, th this can't come in. Accusations show up all the time in the heavenly place. The devil always going, trying to talk to God, speak to their atmosphere, speak your truth and say, well, what about this when he did this? What about this when he did that? What about this? And Jesus says, and you, got, and you know what? I'm still interceding. The real word for interceding means to intercept. So everything the devil tries to throw, Jesus catches it and says, I got it. Uh-oh, Throw this at her. I got it. Throw this at him. I got it. Everything that the devil sends to us, watch this. It don't get to us because Jesus keeps interceding. He keeps intercepting. I got it. I can carry it. And what he does is he takes it and put it right under the blood. Everything you think you know about a person, everything you think you can come up with, it don't matter because he keeps covering it. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like blessing this morning. Watch this, okay? Watch this. Oh, so here it is. Watch this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He asked another question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? See that question mark? Watch this. Shall tribulation? Now, I've talked to you before, but let me teach it again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Show tribulation? Well, tribulation is not a who. Tribulation, tribulation is not a who. Who? He couldn't find no who, so he had to go to the what? Who? Uh oh, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Show tribulation? No. Distress? No. Let's answer it. Let's answer Apostle Paul this morning. Watch this. Persecution? Watch this. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, swore, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Ooh. If Jesus died for me before I was born to be able to sin, how much would he do for me now that I'm confessing my sins? If he died for me before I said yes in the natural, how much would he give me now that I'm pursuing the yes that I, I, that I have declared? Okay, let's move. Watch this. For I am persuaded that neither death are you fully confident? Are you fully persuaded? Do you know that nothing can stop you? Do you know it without a doubt? I'm fully persuaded, watch this, that neither death nor life, I don't care how bad it get, I don't care how good it get, nor angels, watch this, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things presence, nor things that come. Now, Paul left out a very important part that I want you to rejoice. 
He don't bring up the past because that was already taken care of. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Watch this. Watch this. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. If God, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, if it was love that made him die, love won't stop him after death. Love made him rise again. And when he rose, I rose with him. It was love that keeps him as an intercessor. So you can't stop me because you can't stop God from loving me. That's the word. You can't stop me because you can't stop God from loving you. I don't care how much you may know about me. He going to keep loving me. And so since it was the love of God that made him die, it's going to be the love of God that, that continue to work in my life. Because I don't care how much you make me convinced by another man's behavior, you are never be able to convince God by that same man's behavior not to love him. God said, I'm going to love him. I don't care where he is. I don't care what he did. I'm going to love him because that's the kind of love I am loved. I can't help. I can't be nothing but who I am. I can hear God say, I only can be true to myself. I am loved. And because he loves us, this is where the confidence is. Because he loves us, you can't stop me because he loved me too much. He loved me too much to leave me in a grave. He loved me too much to leave me broken. He loved me too much to leave me frustrated. He loves me too much to leave me broke. He loved me too much to leave me poor. No, because he loved me, nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Woo! which is in Christ Jesus our Lord and that same Christ is the same mind that I have so the same love that works for Christ works in me you can't stop my daddy from loving me that's why you can't stop me because <laughs> of God before you point number three the word is a lamp unto my feet I, I know I can continue because there's something that walks with me. It's called the word. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. In the old biblical days, when they would walk, they would tie a lantern to their feet. Good to see you, Gwen. God bless you. Thank you so much for the keyboard. Everybody say hello to Sister Gwen. She blessed me with a Triton keyboard, and I've always loved them, but Oh, I thank God for that keyboard. Love you. But when you understand what walks with you, he said, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I walk with the word. I walk with God. You can't stop me. Do you understand? I see where I'm going. I know what God is going to do. I know what God has promised. It's a, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That's why people sometimes don't like you because you see too much. The more you walk, the more you see because you carry a light and you carry God's word. Woo! Okay. That's point number three. Point number three, okay, comes out of Psalms 119, 105, okay, Psalms 119, 105, now let's go to Psalms 91, I, I'm encouraged this morning, I tell you, woo, see, you got to declare some things out of your mouth, and this one you got you to gotta know who you are in God, watch this, you got to begin to say this, I am unstoppable, see, woo, See, your flesh has been talking to you so long, you are afraid to declare your spiritual inheritance. Quit acting like you're a chump. You're not. You're a champ. Quit acting like you weep, you're strong. Quit acting like you can't make it. You already made it. You're more than a conqueror. Come on, come on. It's time out for them days for you to second guess yourself. Do you know who you are? I am the son of God. I am the son of the most high. I understand who I am. Come on, Eddie Murphy can say it. You got to know it. I'm a son of a moon guy. At any time, my situation can change. At any time, because of who I am. Walk in. You can't stop me. Do you know who I am? Do you know where I come from? Do you know what I possess? Do you know the power that's behind my name? Oh, God. I finally got it. You got to know 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 it. The power of life and death is in my tongue. The word is on my feet. The sword is in my hand. I have the heart of God, the mind of God. I got vision, insight, power, strength. Come on, the fruit of the spirit walks with me. Angels assist me. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You got to know who you are. Woo! 
You got to know who you are. Watch this. Psalm 31. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwells, live. Abide in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. That's right. And my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Come on, somebody. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noise of the peasant. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His trust, his truth shall be like a shield in a, bu in a buckler. You got to realize that. Come on, somebody. Watch this. And thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the peasant that walks in darkness for the destructions. Watch this. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Woo! What's this? <laughs> okay. I just, God just gave me a revelation just now. You know what he told me? He said, I'm making room for you so you can see your enemies fall. I'm making room in your life so that you can see the enemy fall. <laughs> oh God when God opened up the Red Sea for Moses and the children of Israel he left it open so that he could watch this Let there's some things God wants you to watch it die there's some things that God wants you to be a witness to its death there's some things see this watch this they have been complaining about Pharaoh. God says, well, I'm going to show you that Pharaoh is not your problem. All the external problems, hell, situations, suffering you've been through, I'm going to show you that it's not your problem. So watch this. I'm going to open up something for you that when you cross over, it's going to bring you into a greater level of living. But when they cross over, Watch this. You're crossing over. The enemy is crossing into. And so, what? watch this. God held up. Come on. God held up the Red Sea. Watch this. On both sides. The Bible says they walked through on dry land. Watch this. Not only does God make a way for you to cross over, he makes a way for you. Watch this. Watch this. That you don't, there is no evidence of what you've been through on your feet. They walked through on dry land. They didn't have any, any water on them that says, I've been through the Red Sea. The only thing that they had to say they've been through the Red Sea was their testimony. There are some things that God is bringing you through that the only, only evidence that you have that you've been through that is your testimony. There is no rape on your feet. There's no molestation on your hair. There is no residue on your life. So he let them walk through the Red Sea. It was a miracle. Watch this. On dry ground. Woo! God. Oh, on dry ground. Watch this. Now, the minute they cross over, he let the enemy get close enough so he can drown him by the same miracle that he delivered you into. Oh, your miracle to a miracle to you will be a drowning to another. Woo! Oh, come on, Dad. Yeah, yeah. See, see, he got the drown because your past tries to follow you. I heard you, Dad. And when your past try to follow you, and God will let your past get close enough not to catch you, but close enough for you to see it drown. There's some things in your life, and I'm telling you, in the year of 2020, it's already happened in 2019, God says, I'm going to let you see it drown. Did you see it fall? Did you see the very thing that, that, that used to trouble you, used to, be on, used to get to you, used to frustrate you, used to mess you up? Do you see it? Do you see it? Look at it again. Look back. I want you to look. This time, I want you to look back. Look back and watch watch what can't catch you no more. Look back and see what will never be your problem again. Look back and see what will never hold you down again. And when they look back, God let the Red Sea, watch this, drown Pharaoh army in the Red Sea. They didn't have to fight. Look, you've been trying to fight. Listen, you ain't got to fight over this. Uh-oh, 
I hear the Lord again. There are some things you don't have to pray about no more. You prayed for 400 years. I'm going to send a deliverer. And when I kill this enemy, you won't be something you just prayed about. You don't have to pray about this. I'm going to take care of this. You don't have to fight this battle. I'm going to fight this battle. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Watch this. Watch this. He drowns the enemy. What do you do? Now listen, listen, listen. You're in a blessed place. Because the place you're in now, you're not going to be able to bring up Pharaoh. Because he, I drowned him. Don't talk to me about Pharaoh. Don't talk to me about your past. Don't talk to me about what you've been through. You already on the other side. Woo! You're on the other side. And I showed you that when you follow the cloud by day and the, and the pillar of fire by night, I will let the very thing that drives you to another place drive your problem to death. Woo! Okay? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Back to the word, Psalms 91. And a thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. I'm untouchable. I'm unstoppable. Because I'm following God. You got to believe it. Listen, listen, listen. You cannot walk into this new level. Let me shut this door. It's bothering me. You, can, you, cannot, you cannot walk into this new level. You cannot walk into this new level. Not having the full confidence of who you are. You must know I am unstoppable. I am more than a conqueror. It may come against me, but it can't win. It may be formed, but it can't prosper. You got to know it. Okay? Well, watch this. Okay, here we go. Point number four. Let's move into these points. I'm excited. Give me a little extra time today. Okay? Watch this. Good to see you, Captain March. Point number four. Point number one. Stop believing you can be stopped. Point number two. If God be for you. Point number three. The word is a lamp unto my feet. Point number four, now we are building on the basics. You are building on the basics. God has given you the basic foundation to know who you are. From servanthood to sonship. From religion to relationship. Thank you, Dad. That's, that's something my father taught me, Apostle Michael Scott. Watch this. So you must understand that. You're building on the basics. Now, Jesus is the cornerstone. Everything that you do now, you're building on the basics. That's all you're doing. You're building on the basics. God has given you the foundation. Christ is the foundation upon the apostles and the prophets. Uh, apostolic and prophetic teams are being built and we're building them on the basics. And we're building what God has called us to based upon the basics. Now that you understand foundation, you understand the basic principles in God, you're going to build upon those. You continue it on the foundation. You're building upon a solid foundation now. A solid, a solid understanding, okay? And you're building upon it. The Spirit of God shall rest upon these foundations. When you have these foundations, you will see yourself being elevated. You see everything in your life growing. Why? Because, what's this? Because you're building upon a solid foundation. Okay? I know identity, purpose. Those are solid foundations. So now, okay? Very key. You're building. You're building. You're building. You're building. You're building. Okay? Watch this. Good to see you. Uh, Sister Larson, God bless you. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Now, point number five. Excellence, watch this. Point number five. Excellence is your divine appetite now. Excellence, watch this. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Excellence is your divine appetite. Point number five, okay? Excellence is your divine appetite. I'll say it again. Excellence, okay, is your divine appetite. The enemy can always hold you down when you don't change your diet. Every season in your life, every level of your life, every dispensation of your life, every dimension of your life, there is a diet with that dimension. The key to the enemy is making sure that you do not eat the right food. Eating the right food is receiving the right words. It is receiving the right revelation. It is receiving the right information, the illumination. When you change your diet according to the revelation, I told you, every experience brings a revelation. When you, when you digest that revelation, 
that God has given you, it is that revelation that promotes you. It is that revelation that exalts you. It is a word that is being lifted up. If I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all bitter to me. And so it is from that revelation that you are moved. Okay, watch this. And so what happens is you got to know your diet as you change. As you change, as you are conformed, you change your diet. Okay, you, you, there's a different diet. And so you have to understand that. And so the enemy hoping that you don't take a divine appetite. A lot of people have not grown because your appetite is studying your growth. What you eat has everything to do with the, how wealthy you are and how healthy you are. In the natural, little times you're not healthy or you're not able to go into places and do things because you're out of shape because of your eating habits. You have to know how to eat in God. You have to know what to eat in God. You have to understand God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Your diet. And so when it came time for what's this? For Daniel and the Hebrew boys, and it was time testing time, the devil was recruiting. He was looking for people that had a certain diet. And so he was looking for lawyers, doctors, psychologists, biologists, a uh, uh, psyche, all the different people. And, and Daniel was on the list. But Daniel understood something. If you want to know me at my best, if you want me to understand to maximize my potential, then you must allow me to stick with the diet of God. Okay? Now, in the Bible, what's this? Doctrine is, is referred to as meat. Okay, doctrines or, or wine. Okay, and so he said, I don't want to eat the king's meat, which means I can't eat the king's doctrine, which means I cannot have a diet that is tied to the king when I already have a diet that's tied to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm telling you, God is showing you your new diet for your new level. He's showing you your new diet for your new dimension. He's showing you your new appetite. Excellence is your new diet for where you're going. That's why I'm preaching confidence. You got to be on fire for God. Well, because you have to be very careful what you partake, what you put in your mouth, what you consume. You got to be very careful what you swallow. You got to be very careful what you allow to digest, the, the digestive system, the, the diet. Oh, you got to be very careful. You got to be very careful. So you got to be very careful what you put in your mouth, what you allow to be in your system. Now, watch this. <clears throat> in the natural, we eat from our mouth. But in the spiritual, watch this. We eat from our heart and from our mind. So you got to say, think on these things. Because that's how you eat. Oh, watch this. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so it is the carnality that holds you in a certain place. But when you change your diet for your mind, you are carnal because of the things you think. Uh oh, but when you change your thinking process and you begin to eat different, uh oh, you eat. I got a book coming out next year next year called 31 plates because you got to sit down and eat with God. You got to take communion, common union, a breaking of bread. Every time Jesus would sit down at the table with the apostles, it was a shift in the life. Every time you eat God's word, there's a shift in your life and you have to shift your diet. I can no longer eat this. I can no longer eat that. I can no longer believe this. I can no longer align myself with this because there is a diet that's tied to my dimension. There's a diet that's tied to my design. And so I must take on the diet. Excellence is the appetite of this dimension. The spirit of excellence. And so what God is doing, he said, I want you to eat excellence. I want everything about you to consume, consume, consume the consumer. I want you to consume excellence. And so watch this. And, you, and what happens is you become what you eat. And so the more you eat excellence, you become excellence in everything that you do and everything that you say. Because I can tell by what you eat of what you will become. Woo! God. Uh oh. Here we go. Here we go. So you got to become, to be conformed to the image of his son, to work your gifts and the knowledge and what you're building upon is an excellent place in God. All right. Okay. Are you hearing me? Oh, watch this. So point number five. Excellence is our divine appetite. Okay? Very key. 
Point number six. Now let's let's talk a little bit about excellence, and we're gonna we're gonna teach today. Oh my God! Watch this. Point number six. When it comes to excellence in anything that you're doing, I hope you're hearing that. You're confident, right? You can't be stopped. You can't lose with the stuff you're using. You know greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. You're moving towards excellence with a confident mindset. Okay? Watch this. Now watch this. One of the reasons why a lot of times we did not work in the spirit of excellence is because our objectives or our motive for doing things were wrong. So you have to ask yourself a question. When it comes to the spirit of excellence, you have to ask yourself this question. Do I care about the spirit of excellence or do I just want to get paid or do I just want a reward? The day is over for you to want a reward on something you're not working. You must have the spirit of excellence because that's who I am. We don't do anything, watch this. Based upon, watch this, and I'm not reading the comments today because I want to just flow. And so if you're making comments, I'll come back and, and read them later. Watch this. You don't want to do or walk in the spirit of excellence based upon attainment. I want you to hear this now. The Bible says that the Abraham staggered not even though he did not attain. He didn't need attainment to validate him. He did it because that's who he was. He had became what he believed. He, he walked it out. That's why I was counted at him as unto righteousness based upon his belief. Excellence is how we live. Not because I want to get paid from it. Not because there's a reward. But because that's who I am. Because that's what I've been eating. And so what happens now, the devil can't trick you or slow you down. God, this is for you today. Receive this. He can't stumble you anymore because you're not looking for anything from it to continue in it. This is who you be. I'm living holy for the rest of my life. Regardless of what happened, this is what Job had attained. The Bible said Job was perfect. Why would the Bible say Job was perfect? Because his attitude is, I'm perfect because of who I am in God. Not because of what I attain. So the Lord giveth and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't need everything to work for me to know that it's already worked for me. Good to see you, Sister Anderson. God bless you. See, if I lose the sons, the houses, the car, it don't matter because I'm with him. The one who gave it to me is still in my life. And so because I, watch this, I am connected to the source. The resources don't matter. They can be seasonal. But because I'm working from the spirit of excellence, not because I'm trying to impress, not because I need to manifest. I know it's going to manifest, but I'm not doing it for the manifestation. I'm not going to God because he can heal me. I'm going to God because I love him. And because I love him, his love says there is a healing package in it. Oh, God. But I got to know, I, I, the spirit of excellence is on my life. That's what I do. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for reward. I don't do it for accolades. I don't do it for approval. I don't do it for attention. Oh, I live from who I be. I live from who I be. I'm not trying to get people to like me. Excellence is who I am. That's all that I eat. That's all that I digest. It's excellent. So everything in my life reflects who I spend time with. Whoever I spend time with the most, whatever I think about the most is what I become. And whatever I think about, that's how I eat. And so when I think on God, when I live God, and hear my live and move and have my being, then the spirit of excellence. And so it's not about reward. Now, why is that important? Because at this level, the level of confidence that you have, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The level of confidence that you have, the level of boldness that you have, the level of revelation that you have, the devil going to try to buy you. When you move into the level of excellence, at the real level of excellence is really the level of obedience. It is by total obedience that everything you do become excellence. Because when you obey God, 
by your submission, by your love for the Father, to please the Father, that love brings you into a place of excellence. And what happens when that happens, all of a sudden now, the same folks that talked about you don't want to be connected to you. The same people that rejected you is going to ring your phone. The same people that murmured about you don't say you are their friend and they're going to try to reattach themselves to you. But because, because what's this? of excellence, you will not be able to be bought. You can't give me the kingdoms of the world. I already have it in my purpose. And so now the temptations that will come from the devil will not work. You can't buy me to be on BET. And you can't buy me to be here and be there. I don't care. I will not compromise because it's, I'm not doing it to be seen. I'm not doing it to be heard. I'm not doing it so they can buy my books. I'm not doing it so they can know who I am in God. I'm doing it because excellence is my DNA. Excellence is my, is, is my blood. It's my plasma. Excellence is how I breathe. This is what I do. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And so now God says, now that you're moving to the spirit of excellence, I can trust you in troubled places. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I can trust you in troubled places. I want to put you in a place that temptation is at its greatest. I want to put you at a place that, 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 that lust is at its greatest. I'm going to put you in a place where compromise is at its greatest. But because this is how you live, you're not doing it to solve a wound. You're not doing it to prove you're a man. You're not doing it before your wife can say, baby, you were right. You're not doing it for any other reason, but this is who I am. Now, you better hear this. When this happened, the test for the approval must come. Get ready. Be ready. Get ready. Be ready. Be ready to get ready. Get ready to be ready. Watch this. When this happened, and it is happening now, watch, I'm telling you, even for my life, my wife's life, the phone calls are going to come, the promotion is coming, God has already declared on my life the favor, and what happened is, it is time to introduce the mysteries of God to the powers and principalities that be. There are powers that be, you got to hear me, there are powers that be that they have been known for tearing down great kings. They have been known to break women down. They have been known to pervert the strongest preachers. They have been, been, been known to poison the greatest ministries. But our time has come, the changing of the guards. And when you have moved to the spirit of excellence, because this is how you live, then we'll see why you're doing what you're doing. Are you doing it for a watch? Are you doing it for a car? Are you doing it for the TV? Are you doing it to make millions? Are you doing it to, to drive a better car, to live in a better house? Why do you do what you do? And when we are tested at this level, because excellence was nothing that we needed to do to attain, but excellence is how we are. It is who I be. It is who I be. That level of obedience, watch this, is still there, Sister Anderson. I'm not obeying God because I don't have no women chasing after me. I can obey God when all the women want me, when all the men want you, when all the money come your way. I can still follow God. The spirit of excellence is the safe place because when it is your appetite, I'm not about to give up excellence for a one night stand. I'm not about to give up excellence for a Rolex watch. I'm not about to give up excellence so I can have a big tall building full with people. I'm not about to give up excellence so my standards will not change. And when God elevate me, when God move me to that level, I'm still a servant of God, a son of God. I'm still in relationship with God. I'm still on my face praying. I'm still studying. I'm still fasting. I didn't get caught up in the blessings that I forgot to bless, sir. I didn't get caught up in the giving. I forgot to give her. No, because the spirit of excellence is not based upon what I attain. If I never attain the promises, I will not stagger because I live by faith. That's the spirit of excellence. I trust in God. And so now God can trust me in environments where people who are not 
not sold out. They are not totally committed. They are not totally dedicated. And I can show them that if you was obedient in the small things, you wouldn't have got tripped up in the big things. If your heart was really right when you only had seven members, your heart would have stayed right when you had 7,000. If your heart was really right, and God was to test us to see, is the spirit of excellence, are you doing it for the right reason, or are you doing it so that you can attain something? Woo! All right. For those who heard me, because that was for you, blessings have your name on it. She was right. There's a blessing. Tasha Cos was right. But the question is, when the blessing comes, will the spirit of excellence remain? Let me say it better. When the blessing comes, will the spirit of obedience increase? Increase. Increase. Will the spirit of humility increase? When the blessing flows, when it overtake thee, will the spirit of commitment, loyalty, dedication, will the persistence of focus remain the same? In your rising journey, that's the question. The spirit of excellence always asks you a question. Why do you do what you do? Is it because you're getting paid or because you're getting a reward? Or is it because it, the spirit of excellence makes you look more like your daddy? I'm trying to look like my daddy. I'm trying to work like my daddy. I'm trying to do it the way God do it. Because I know I'm the son of God. Why am I not looking like my father? I'm not putting on excellence so that people can say, wow, what a presentation. I want them to see God presence on me, not the presentation of my gift. The life must be seen through the level of excellence. How excellent are you living? Okay, very key. All right, that's point number six. Point number seven. The spirit of excellence will reveal, and this is the question you'll go to, this is point number seven. The spirit of excellence will reveal, is this my lane or am I afraid to grow or become? Point number seven, the spirit of excellence, your spirit of excellence, all right, will reveal, is this my lane or am I afraid to grow or become? When you start moving in the spirit of excellence, it begins to challenge because a lot of times you are not in your lane. And you're not moving in the spirit of excellence because you're trying to become something that's not tied to your design. And you cannot fulfill your design when you don't have the diet for it. Having the right lane is very important to your destination. Because the real destination is the end result of who you become. Real destination from God is not finally being on TV. That's not a destination. Uh, finally uh, making millions of dollars. That's not it. Uh, finally uh, attaining a certain degree. That's not it. The real destination is that you be conformed to the image of his son. You're, you've been predestined to be conformed to the image. We think destination means arriving at a financial goal or arriving at a certain status, or arriving at a certain quality of life, which is a part of it. But the real destination is that when he comes, and we never know when he's going to crack the sky, that you look like him. The real destination is that when he shows up, he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle that has allowed the process to, to remove everything out of your life that resembles the old Adam. And everything in your life should be like the new Adam. In Adam, all die, the first Adam. But the last Adam, in Christ, all is made alive. The real destination is how you, what you have become that is identical to Christ. That is just like Christ. That's why we call ourselves Christians. One who follows Christ follows that mindset, follows that character. That's real destination. 
And so everything in your life should be moving you to the spirit of excellence, which is the spirit of Christ, that you look like your father. Woo! Okay? Very key. When you are not in your lane, what happens is you're not experiencing the wisdom to become like your father in your lane. And so the spirit of excellence will challenge you because there are things that you're trying to do that's not according to your diet. And this is why it becomes very difficult because you are trying to become something you don't have the authority to become. Everybody's given a measure. Grace is a measure. Your gift is a measure of Christ. You got to know your lane. Now, that's the first part of it, okay? Part number seven, Spirit of Excellence will reveal this is my lane. I've learned more in my latter years what my lane is as an apostle to establish apostolic and prophetic teams, to understand the spirit of grace. And there's different things that, that help me in the transformation. Okay? That's, bro that's right, Brother Mike. Renew, transform, conform. Okay? Now, the other part of that, point number seven, the Spirit actually reveal this lane. Or, maybe it is your lane. Maybe there are things in you that you are afraid to become. And the Spirit of Excellence will reveal to you either it's not your lane or it is your lane and you are afraid of what you possess. Your greatest fear is the fear of greatness. This is why when I first came on today and I started saying you can't be stopped, you struggle with saying that. You struggle with saying I am great. You've been beat so bad that you're afraid to encourage yourself. You're afraid to say it. You're afraid to say it. Even when you say we are more than conquerors, you'd rather quote the scriptures than to say it from your innermost being. I am more than a conqueror. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If, if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away. But also I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're afraid to say it. Your fear is your, you fear the greatness of who you are. You rather believe in the power of the old man than the resurrection power of the new man. You rather believe that we are human and that we make mistakes than that we are divine and we can walk in a level of maturity. You're more convinced about the power of something that is dead than a renewed mind. You have more confidence in what went down in baptism versus what rose up out of baptism. Baptism is the, is the death, burial, and resurrection. Most people live more in the confidence of the death and the burial than they believe in the resurrection. Most people stay around to watch you die and be buried, but they won't stay in your life to watch you be risen. They don't stay around to see the power of God that rises you out of that dead situation. And not only are you risen, but you're risen new. You're risen fresh. We don't believe in that, but we must move into that. Watch this. And so when you move into the spirit of excellence, it begins to tell you, you can do that. That is a part of your calling. You, that, that does have your name on it. You just afraid to walk in it. You can talk in front of people. You can establish your own business. You're supposed to own the mall. You're supposed to walk out there. You're supposed to declare that. You should have, you do have 10 books in you. You do have 30 songs in you. You are this person. You are that person. And the spirit of excellence begins to challenge your fears. Stop being afraid to be great. Stop being afraid to think outside of the box. Stop being afraid to say what you see. Stop being afraid. Walk in the spirit of excellence. And it begins to challenge what you've been afraid of. You, it's easier to say, that's not my lane. Versus saying, that's who I am. Don't tell me. I told you yesterday. If you are attracted to it from the spirit, then that means you should be attracted to it. Uh-oh. If you are attracted to it, that means you should be attached to it. When you are in the spirit, 
what you are attracted to in the spirit is what you should be attached to. But the devil doesn't want you to ever believe what you possess. You are more than conquerors. You have this treasure in earthen vessels. And so you got to quit saying, that's not my lane. No, the spirit of excellence will wake you up. You just afraid to put the practice in. You just afraid to step out. You lean on everybody else. You want somebody else to drive, but it's in you. You can do it. God called you to do it. God qualified you to do it. God glorified you to do it. And he told you I've been predestined. Who he predestined, he called. Who he called, he justified. Who he justified, he glorified. What can we say to these things? You are more than a conqueror. Why are you so easy to believe in the case and don't believe in the can? Oh, uh, you can't get to a cake before you get to a can. C-A-N is the first three words. Stop at the can. Don't keep moving to the can. Don't add a T to the end. Keep going and say, I can. And stop right there. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. One of my favorite movies, Eddie Murphy, he looked at the TV set. He about 600 pounds. But he say, yes, I can. You got to know it. But the enemy don't want you to believe in the spirit of excellence because it will challenge you can do it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my time is already up. Watch this. Now, so point number seven. The spirit of excellence will reveal, is this my lane? Or am I afraid to grow? Are you 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 afraid to expand? Are you afraid to step out the boat? Are you afraid to speak to Lazarus even though he's dead? Are you afraid? You got to say, God, I know you know the answer. Can these bones live? Can these bones live? And the right answer to it is, Lord, you know. Lord, you know God is in you. You know. How do we know the way? You know the way, Thomas. Quit playing dumb. Quit playing dumb. I put the way in you. I'm in you. I put the truth in you. Greater see that is in you than he's in the world. Well, who is, who is in you? I am the way, the truth, and the light. Don't tell me you don't know the way. The way is in you. Don't tell me you don't know the truth. The truth is in you. Don't tell me you don't know this quality of life. This quality of life is in you. And the spirit of excellence will say, come on, let's start doing what we've been born to do. Woo! Or are you afraid to grow in the last part or become? He came into his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. He came into his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him. Let me ask you a question. Did you receive him? Well, when you receive him, he gave you power. The minute you receive God, the minute you said, Lord, I believe, I accept this gift of salvation, that you died for my sins, the minute that you do that, he gave you the authority to become, to become. You're absolutely right, Sister Logan. The spirit of excellence says, stop being on the sideline. You're not a cheerleader. You are a major player. Get in the game. Become. Become. You go from the being, the be to the being, to the belonging, to the becoming. He gave us the power to be. Be sanctified. Be holy. Be. When, he, when God breathed into man and man became a living soul, you become a living being. You have the ability to move, to think, to reason. You have a consciousness. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus be not conformed to this world. Be a by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove. You don't have the mind of God so you can brag and say you have it. You have the mind of God so you can prove that which is good, which is God, that which is acceptable. You prove the acceptable 
gifts from God. You prove what you know how to give God what he requires. So you prove three things. You prove by the renewing mind, you prove what is good, you prove what is acceptable, and you prove the perfect will of the Father. The perfect will of the Father is that you be conformed to the image of his Son. That when I come and return, you shall be like me. You should be on the journey to becoming. I give you the power to become. It is your be that's coming, always coming. I'm always coming into who I be. I'm always coming into who God says I am. I'm always coming into my divine nature. I'm always coming into that perfect place with God. I'm always coming with power. I'm always coming with fortitude. I'm always coming with strength. I'm always coming. I'm always traveling. I'm always moving. I'm always going higher. I'm always transitioning because he gave me the legal authority to be calm. And the spirit of excellence challenges what was dormant in, in you. It challenges things that you have been taught out of. What did you allow the devil to convince you that's not true? That you're weak? That you can't make it? That's not true. That's not true. You must know that. Okay. Oh, I got to stop this. Point number seven. The spirit of excellence will reveal, is this my lane or am I just afraid to grow? Watch this. And become. There's a, there's, a, there's a story, it's, it's a joke, but it has a very powerful principle, and I'm going to let you go. We got to get ready for Sister Nick's journey. Watch this. There was a frog, and there was uh, some um, dough on, on, on the park bench. There was a frog, and there was a dough, and they would sit there, and they would talk every day. Well, one of the days they sat out, the sun came out, and as the sun came out, the frog said to the dough, why are you moving me out the way? And the doe said to the frog, I'm not moving you out of the way. I'm just growing. Again, it was a frog and doe. And they was out on the park bench and they would talk every day. It's a story, but it has a point to it. And one of the days the sun came out and the sun began to, to shine upon the doe. And the frog said to his friend, Doe, why are you taking my space? Why are you moving me out the way? And the Doe says, I'm not trying to move you out of the way, but I'm growing. You can't allow people to make you feel bad about growing when the sun, the truth, the light, your purpose, your identity is shining on your life. I'm not trying to move you out the way. I'm just growing. Don't be afraid to grow. The spirit of excellence is what causes the sun to shine. There's more to you. Morpheus says to Neo, hit me. You're faster than this. Do you think this is air that you're breathing? Don't sit under people who only want your friendship as long as you don't grow. As long as you don't mature. They only want you at the church as long as you stay stagnant. They only want you on the praise team. They only want you to preach, teach. They only want you as a husband, as a wife. As long as you don't grow. You must become at the spirit of excellence. When you take on the spirit of excellence, by obedience, God will move you to it. Excellence will say there's more to you. You can do a better job. You can be more effective. You can be more accurate. You can be more clear. You can be stronger. And now you have to decide. Are you going to deny the lane you've been called to be in? Because you refuse to grow. You are afraid of your own growth. That's why sometimes you don't you don't go after a certain teaching because you know that if you sit under this teaching, it's going to challenge you. You know certain people are going to challenge you. Okay? Got to stop there. Got to stop there. I'm going to pick up part 10 tomorrow. Father, we thank you for this word. Oh, God, we thank you for your anointing. Thank you for clarity. We feel your presence. You're teaching us how to continue. 
Forgive us for allowing the words of the enemy, the words of the can't to override what we can. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. You said we've been predestined. You said no what before making so prosper. You said all things work together for the good. Allow us to walk in. And you said who can separate us from the love of God. Thank you, Lord. You allow us to see that if we follow you, you will drown our enemies on your own. If we follow you out of Egypt, we'll be able to see the very thing that we worried about no longer has a hold. Thank you, Lord, that we have seen the revelation today. That you, if we follow you, you won't let our past catch us. If we follow you, you won't let our past catch us. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you for everybody coming on. Hit that share button. If you don't have your books yet, if you don't have your CD, you don't have your t-shirts, notify us. Let us know what you want. And uh, we'll bless you from that. Okay, we'll make that, possible, make that available to you. We love you. Don't forget we have a website, www.divineinsightministries.org. Yes, and uh, don't forget that. And we just thank God for all that he's doing. And uh, God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow, part 10, okay? Stay faithful, stay loyal. But remember, if you don't, if you don't know nothing else, it's time to continue. Continue in everything that God has promised you. We love you. Keep us in prayer. Walk in God's favor.